My guest tonight is an international superstar, and you're about to find out he's got hidden talents. Would you please welcome Guy Pearce? <laughs> welcome. Hidden talents. Hidden talents. Okay. Well, not too well. Am I going to find out what the hidden talents are as well? Oh, no, I think you're a crosser. Oh, I, I really do. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. Everyone knows you as, a, as, as an outstanding actor. You've made so many movies, Hollywood, here, everywhere. But you're also an outstanding singer-songwriter. We've got a little sample right here. Um, Given you're so well known for your acting, are people surprised to find out that you, you have a side hustle? Well, uh, I think some people are, but I mean, I, I was talking about music about 30 years ago, and of course, people were rolling their eyes saying, Not another soap star is going to release a song. So I sort of stopped talking about it and just kept it to myself, you know. So some people knew that I made music, and other people didn't. Yeah, a lot of people are shocked to find out that I sell uh, adult-themed jelly moulds on Etsy. Um, <laughs> I wasn't surprised to find that out. No, well, mainly you... because you're my main supply. <laughs> That's so. right. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you talk about where it all started. I've actually got some footage of, I think, your first band here. Oh, wow. We'll, we'll have a little look. This is from the archives. Have a look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's Jason yeah. Donovan, <laughs> Kylie, and there you are, yeah. tinkling the ivories. In a lovely rugby jumper. <laughs> yes. You can see why we took off, all of us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> was it out of a love of music that you didn't release an album during the Neighbours years? It was... It was the... Uh, yeah, it was... I think it was the, uh, the difficulty that everybody had that everybody from the show was releasing something. And I, and, I, and I was kind of experimenting with music and I didn't really feel like I needed or wanted to release anything, but I just liked making music and I always have. And have, have you just done that consistently? Because and, and, you, your second album is just coming out, but you... Yeah. Have you always been writing and... Yeah, and yeah, I've always been making stuff and always been, you know, trying sort of various styles and different things. And, and it wasn't really until 2009 when Michael Barker said to me, well, what do you do with this? You really should sort of do something with it. And so he managed to t talk me into actually getting something out. So, and, and talked about getting it out of my system. That was sort of the main thing, really. And, uh, now, now, you've got an edge on, on most singer-songwriters in that they are often terrible actors in their film clips. But I've got, I, I've got a film clip here that, that shows off your range. Have a look at this. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is awesome. Now, you play every character in the film clip. I mean, that is beautiful. That is beautiful work. This I, is I, really like my sort of show reel. I, don't have, I can just send this to, <laughs> to Hollywood film producers and say, if you have any questions about what I'm capable of, it's all here in this video. Absolutely. Watching that, I got a sense that you're a massive fan of Breakfast TV because that felt like, like you had well, fallen in love with every infomercial Tim on the White, Yeah, Tim White, who directed the video, had this great idea about turning it into an infomercial and we got Larry uh, on board to, to do the intro for us. So, yeah, it was, it was fun to take the mickey. Now, you're about to release your second album. Uh, it is called The Nomad. The title track is about your father, who actually died uh, when you were eight years old in a plane crash in Avalon. Yes. Um, why write that song now? Well, it's a, it's a sort of a combined uh, idea, because really, in, through 2015, I had a rather tumultuous year, and I felt myself a bit of a nomad, sort of wandering around the world trying to find myself again. And so I just tied that in with... The, the, the aircraft that my father died in was the Nomad. So I just sort of tied the two ideas together, really. You do, as you know, spend a lot of your time trying to work out who... You know, I tried to work out who my father was in all those years. And, but I think I've managed to put some of that to rest now. now and you're, you're actually a father now. You've got, you've got a two-year-old. Yes. So what, what do you do as a father? Like, what sort of a father are you? Are, well, you, are not, you a tiger not, not mum? Not become a test pilot. Not become a test pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, don't become a test pilot. <laughs> Uh, stay alive. Uh, stay alive. Stay alive. Great <laughs> approach. That's that is right. terrific. Yeah, yeah. But uh, are you are you an overprotective sort of father, or are you are you, are you a bit hands off? No, I'm very hands on. Although I, I'm away a lot, so I mean, right now I'm a, I'm you know however many thousands of miles away from him because he's in Prague with his mum uh, making a film. Well, she's making a film. He's. Just, I was going to say, really getting the jump on the game. <laughs> he's there. just eating eating the catering. <laughs> uh, so you know the difficulty for me is is spending time away and actually really missing him, missing both of them. Now your partner Carice uh, is Melisandre on Game of Thrones. Have you watched that? Because uh, I would be sleeping with one eye open. <laughs> 
<laughs> I am a little concerned that our child is a shadow baby. Uh, <laughs> and that he's going to sort of start, you know, fire will start appearing soon. Uh, I have seen the show, yeah, it's pretty intense. She's pretty, she does pretty horrible things. Yeah, but she's great. <laughs> but she is great at doing those horrible things. Yeah, no, and she's very beautiful while she does them. <laughs> <laughs> when Nick Cave um, wrote his script, his screenplay, he sent that to you to read because you, your mates... Have you sent him your music to listen to? Uh, I, I did, actually, yeah. He, he'd asked about it and so I, I was reluctant, but I, I did send it to him and he had some lovely things to say. Which is, is he, it, like, genuinely supportive and, and into it? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, you know, he's Nick Cave, so I don't want to sort of hassle him about it too much, but he did ask <laughs> me about it, you know. <laughs> what do you think about this lyric, Nick? Do you think I should... No? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, no, I don't hassle him too much, but, yeah, he's supportive. Yeah, and, absolutely. And what was it like working with him on a, on a film together? Well, I've actually done a couple of things with him now, and we're now sort of relatively close. Uh, he, he's, he's a really interesting guy, obviously, and he's, it's funny because he's so, you know, he's so bright and the characters that he writes are so well-developed, and yet when you talk to him about them, he'll often say, oh, I don't know, well, it's, it's just there on the page, I don't know. And so, <laughs> you know, you get this impression that he's sort of done all the work and then forgotten that he's actually sort of done it. Yeah. Um, Either that or he's not the genius everyone thinks he is. Yeah, he's, <laughs> Susie's doing all the work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. She's written it all. He's like, I don't know. I just wear the suit. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. You wear a black suit, and everyone goes, "Wow, he must Take be deep. Seriously. He is a deep guy." <laughs> yeah. uh, one of your mo most memorable roles was in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I, I, I think, arguably, the greatest Australian film ever made, or definitely right up there. Well, thank you. And um, not when... that I made the film. But it was well, still... it, it would have been I'll shit out without you. For it. Yeah, do. <laughs> but when Hugo Weaving was on the show, I discussed the um, prospect of a sequel with him. This is what he had to say. What sure. would a Priscilla 2 look like in 2017? Because the world has know. moved on a lot from where it was when that was first. Well, you could either go Flight of Fancy, so you just take these, these three girls, much, much older, and they're falling to bits. <laughs> and and uh, they decide, let's say, to build the space rocket, and there's just a fantastical journey. <laughs> That's just one thing off the top of my head. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> so, yeah. so and bearded. Yeah. Bearded like that. <laughs> yeah. Can we sign you up for Priscilla 2, Queens in Space? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the funny thing is we, we do keep joking about it every time we sort of get, get back together again. Funnily enough, I bumped into Terence, actually, not long ago. Oh, really? Yeah, I went for a jog down a, a street in London and there he was, sitting at a bus stop. <laughs> You know, I said, a... I can give you a lift if you like, Terence. But he said, no, he's quite happy. He wasn't in drag, though. Yeah. <laughs> this is my favourite showbiz story I've ever heard. Really? <laughs> but yeah, that's literally it. it. Don't embellish. It's great. It's perfect. End of story. <laughs> uh, Guy is playing one show only of his music in Melbourne on the 8th of July, and Jack Irish returns to our TVs on the same night. Coincidence? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Pete.